This demonstration is a continuation of a previous demonstration in which I talked about Photoshop automation and creating an action set and creating an action that is recorded within that action set. This demonstration is going to show you how to create a droplet that you can apply to a folder of images from the action that you have already created. So if you haven't already created an action, you need to review part one of photo automation demonstrations. This is part two, and we're creating a droplet from an action that's already be been created. In our actions, you can see that we've created an action that will resize images to a width of 320 pixels and then save them as a JPEG of the same quality as the original images. This works well for images that are already JPEGs that you just simply want to resize. It works for a group of web-ready images that may have different sizes, different widths, and you want them all to be the same size. And it's great for applying this to a group of images. First of all, you're probably wondering, what is a droplet? A droplet is a little application that is created from Adobe Photoshop, and I can show you one right here. It's a, it makes a little application that you could simply drag and drop a folder of images onto the droplet, and it's going to apply this action to all of the images in that folder. So that's kind of the big idea. Now on a Mac, the app, the uh, little droplet is an application. It might make a small executable on other operating systems. So let's look at how a droplet is actually made from an existing action. So we have our action that we've already previously recorded in our actions panel. The next thing that we want to do is create a droplet under File, Automate, Create Droplet. Now it's important before we create the droplet to know where we want these images to go once they have been resized. So it could be that before we make the droplet a better idea might actually be to create a folder for those images to land. So I can create a new folder and I can call it resized right now there's nothing in that folder and here's the folder of images that I want resized. Now if I go under file and automate create droplet in this dialog box I can actually choose where I want the droplet to be saved and I want this to be called resize 320 width because all of these are horizontal images and I want them resized to a width of 320 for this example. So I name my droplet, I tell it where the droplet should live, I hit save, and now I'm going to choose where that, what action we want that droplet to come from. So it's from the action set called resizing and the action that we've recorded that's called 320 width. Next I'm going to choose a folder, a destination folder for that group of images to land. So if I choose this folder called resized, that's our destination folder. That's where we want all of the images that have been resized using the droplet to land. I hit choose and I'm going to override the save as commands and this is going to override any um, any parts of the action that specify a specific file name or specify a specific folder because I really want them to go only into this folder that we've created, this destination folder. So it's going to override any save as commands that I had previously recorded. I'm going to hit OK, and it created a droplet for me. We don't know that until we actually look 
here. And you can see that it's made the little app called Resize 320 Width. Now all I have to do is drag a folder of images onto the droplet and we go back to Photoshop and you can see that it's very quickly opening and resizing images, opening and resizing those images, doing it for us, it saves us a lot of time. If I return to my folders and I click on resized, you can see that it has in fact resized the images from that folder all to 320 width. Of course the height varies because the the original images had varying heights but you can see that they all fit the dimensions of 320 width. And so this concludes the explanation of what a droplet is and how a droplet can be made from an original action in Photoshop. It's important for you to understand how to create the action sets and a new action in order to be able to create a droplet. So I encourage you to watch part one of Photoshop automation on creating an action set and recording an action and then try creating your own droplet.